welcome students and in this video we are going to talk about the existence and uniqueness theorem okay in other words this is also may be called as a fundamental theorem fundamental theorem of od of od we do not call it like that but still you know why i want to put emphasis on fundamental theorem because this is probably the most important theorem which you can learn in ods right okay so first of all what am i trying to do here first of all we start with a system right so uh, let us consider this system let us consider a n cross n system clear uh, n cross n system system given by given by x prime equals to a right which depends on uh, right uh, sorry uh, we are not looking for a uh, linear system but we are looking for x prime equals to f of x that's a uh, system right okay uh, and uh, see here f is a given a given function get yeah? if is a given function and we are looking at a system x prime equals to f of x and now we want to see whether you know um, can we say something about the existence of solution or not okay so before i say the existence of solution first of all we need to understand what a solution what do i mean by a solution okay solution so let's call this equation of this equation of x prime equals to f of x yes okay what do we mean by a solution right so you see a solution of this system essentially of x prime equals to f of x okay and let's say at the initial condition x at the point t naught is x naught okay this is the whole system so essentially x prime equals to f of x is the rule according to which the particle moves and initially at the time t equals to t naught let's say you can take t naught to be zero also x equals to t t equals to t naught uh, the the position is essentially at x naught which is in rn right so which is in rn x naught is in rn so basically we are talking about an n cross n system right okay so uh, a solution of this system is a differentiable function is a differentiable function continuously differentiable sorry let me put it this way continuously differentiable function you don't need continuously differentiable but for all purposes we are just we will be using it continuous differentiable function function and what is the function this is a function x from i to rn what is i i is some interval in i is some interval in let's say r right i subset of r clear okay so essentially uh, if you have a function i from rn uh, x from i to rn okay what does this mean this means that uh, this is nothing but actually you are looking at a curve such that such that for all t in i t in i clear x prime of t so basically it has to satisfy for all t right so it is capital f of x of t clear and moreover x at the point t not x should be such that x at the point t not has to be x not clear so this has to satisfy for all t in i and at the initial point they are should pass to the vector x not so essentially what we uh, you know are um, very vaguely speaking what it means is this see x prime equals to so basically let's say that there is a particle right which is moving with time okay which is moving with time in some you know uh, r2 or r3 okay in some space r2 let's say r2 it is moving in r2 okay with time it is moving so at t equals to t not let's say okay it is somewhere here so this is t equals to t not okay and what happens is it is actually moving along let's let's just uh, assume for now that it is moving like this here yeah? so as, as t increases it goes on doing this now you see 
what is happening is this what is x prime equals to f of x is actually the rule right see f is a vector field f here is a vector field from rn to rn okay is a vector field now what x does uh, sorry what f does is so n equals to 2 in this case okay what this thing says is the rule so it will actually dictate how the particle moves okay so at every point it will give you if you will give a specific direction okay and it will say you have to move in that direction so this is the rule according to which the particle moves huh? and the initial condition x at the point t naught e equals to x naught means you are basically saying that the particle has to start from this point okay so this is the rule according to which the particle moves and this is the uh, x at the point t naught e equals to x naught will actually you know tell you that where to start okay so basically the question of finding a solution is this you have a particle yeah you are basically looking for a particle which starts from i mean uh, whose position at the point t naught is let's say x naught and such that at any point okay at any point t um whatever the domain so basically t is in a b right so any point t in a b x prime of t so the you know the tangent vector at that point right t has to be um, matching with the uh, value of the vector field at that point okay so so i hope this is clear huh? this is just an intuition it's not okay not very mathematical but the thing is you uh, I, I think uh, the idea is clear okay so that is there right now and you see here i have to write down f is a given vector filter given not function but vector i should write as vector filter given vector field okay given vector field now you see uh, what happens is this let's say that uh, so let's take some examples and see huh? examples of existence evidence so let's come back to existence so now that the concept of solutions is clear okay examples so what are the examples which you're looking for so is there a solution or not first of all existence and newness says the first thing is existence of course as the name suggests whether you have a solution or not and secondly you also need to know that if there is a solution is it unique clear okay so let's look at some examples see let's say that look at this example y prime equals to 0 just a first order equation okay so first order order od od right huh? now you see you do realize that if i am writing y prime equals to 0 that will imply y of t equals to constant right for any constant any constant will work so essentially the solution okay so therefore the solution is a family of curve right the solution of such a equation for solution of such an equation an equation is a family of curve right is a family of curves yeah okay? is family of curve now so does there exist a solution of course huh? how many solutions are there they are infinite because you know c is varying in r now the thing is this so uniqueness is not here so generally speaking if you are not specifying the initial data right the uniqueness part won't work okay so basically most of the times maybe there will be a solution but the thing is you cannot guarantee the uniqueness okay so basically now you see if i am putting so additionally let's say that y at the point 0 is 0 so basically i am specifying that at the point 0 y has to pass through 0 right then you see y identically equals to 0 is the only solution it's the only solution okay it's the only solution so you do realize that once i put a specific now uh, i mean you know point that i'm saying that my curve has to pass through this point right so at, at t equals to 0 it has to pass through 0 so then what happens is the uniqueness is there okay now the question is this see um, i am saying is the only solution how do you know this is the only solution that is another question okay let's just quickly see what we can say see let's say that if if so uh, this is how generally we um, try to prove this huh? so if y1 and y2 are two distinct solution let's say 
टू डिस्टिंक्ट सोल्यूशन डिस्टिंक्ट सोल्यूशन ऑफ दिस इक्वेशन लेट से y प्राइम इक्व टू जीरो y एट द पॉइंट जीरो इक्व टू जीरो आई रोड सो मे बी लेट से y नॉट ओके y नॉट कैन बी जीरो डजेंट मैटर हाँ वाई नॉट इज इन आर ओके सो लेट सी व्हाट एपेज इफ देर आर टू डिस्टिंग सोल्यूशन देन डिफाइन इफ वन डिफाइंस इट इज वेरी क्लियर राइट वाई टू बी वाई वन माइनस वाई टू देन दैट विल इम्प्लाई व्हाट दैट वाई प्राइम इज वाई वन प्राइम माइनस वाई टू प्राइम ओके विच इज अगेन जीरो क्लियर एंड दैट विल एक्चुअली इम्प्लाई दैट वाई ऑफ टी इज कॉन्स्टेंट ओके एंड सिंस वाई जीरो इज जीरो सो दैट कॉन्स्टेंट हैज टू बी वाई नॉट राइट दैट कॉन्स्टेंट हैज टू बी वाई नॉट बट यू सी द थिंग इज कॉन्स्टेंट इज नॉट वाई नॉट हेयर बिकॉज वाई इज वाई वन माइनस वाई टू एंड वाई एट द पॉइंट सो वाई वन एट द पॉइंट जीरो इज वाई नॉट एंड वाई टू एट द पॉइंट जीरो इज वाई नॉट सो वाई वन माइनस वाई टू वाई वन जीरो माइनस वाई टू जीरो इज जीरो एसेंशियली सो दिस इज नथिंग बट जीरो क्वेश्चन इज दिस अगेन इज इट क्लियर दैट इफ वाई वाई टी इक्वस टू जीरो इज द ओनली सोल्यूशन देर आर नो अदर सोल्यूशन okay so from here it is quite clear that that has to be the case right there is no other option so uh, in this case the, the thing is this problem has a unique solution okay so that is more or less done but the thing is this for a general problem finding the uniqueness even though you have found the existence finding a uniqueness is a very very difficult question okay so we need to know how to do that okay so for that we are going to look at some uh, a very very important thing but before i do that uh, let us look at another example okay so the question is this let's say that if i am putting a initial value okay so please remember this thing the existence in uh, theorem this holds for so uh, for, for for initial value problem uh, initial value very very important uh, initial value problem i hope you understand what initial value problem means initial value problem means that uh, you are essentially looking at one point so you are specifying that the particle is starting from some point that's the only data which you have uh, initial value okay so let's look at another so basically let let let, put, let me put it this way does all initial value problem has a unique solution let's just put it this way so uh, they may not be huh? so for example let's say that y prime of t equals to 3 y to the power 2 by 3 let's look at this equation yes i hope you guys can solve it equation solve this equation of course you do realize that y0 equals to sorry and y0 equals to 0 let's just put this condition this is the kind of problem so um, clearly clearly y identical equals to zero is always a solution right always a solution ha huh? see if y is identical equals to zero y prime is zero and again this part is also zero so left and right hand side is zero for all t and of course y is identical is zero so y at the point zero has to be zero right so that is always there right now you see also also y One of t, let's call another thing. Y one of t equals to t cube. Also, solve the equation. Solve the equation. Okay. So you see, we have actually, and you can easily check. Huh? So please check this part. Check this part. That y t equals to t cube also satisfies the equation. Okay. Right. So and actually, uh -huh, moreover. you can actually show that mode of work for any tau greater than 0 okay you can show that this family u tau of t okay y tau of t sorry given by 0 if t is less than tau and t minus tau q if t is greater than tau 
okay this problem uh, the, so this family also satisfies the uh, you know problem equation so you do realize that i mean it doesn't have to be that the initial value problem has to have a so, uh, unique solution right unique solution okay right so does it always have to have solution what do you guys think even that even that is true okay so let's look at this is b now see another example huh let's look at this problem let's say uh, consider consider this problem y prime equals to 1 and minus 1 1 if t is negative if t is greater than equal to 0 huh? that's the equation now you this you have to do it you guys have to do it yourself see first of all the here the source term source term means the right hand side huh? so see remark huh? we put it as a remark the right hand side is not continuous not continuous okay it's a valid function of course but it is not continuous huh? in r okay see if it is not continuous if it is a solution then y prime t has to be equals to 1 and minus 1 1 for t negative 1 minus 1 for t greater than equal to 0 so this is not continuous at 0 okay so y prime t if there is a solution then that solution the derivative at the point 0 doesn't have to exist right so this this sorry it has to exist but what i'm trying to say is this it doesn't have to be continuous okay so that will imply that y as a solution y is only differentiable differentiable doesn't have to be continuously differentiable huh? of course the derivative exists but the thing is the derivative at the point zero is not continuous so basically y is only differentiable not c1 not c1 so it is not continuously differentiable right so that's the issue here huh? so not issue but the thing is this is the idea of solution so in this case the solution is not continuously differentiable function but just a differentiable function now you can check that there does not exist there does not exist this is the sign does not exist any solution yes so you understand what do i mean by solution of this problem there does not exist any solution and see um, here whenever i am saying that there does not exist any solution so but solution in this sense huh? solution is this sense. satisfying satisfying y at the point zero is zero okay see the thing is uh, what i am trying to say is this y at the point zero is zero that that sort of solution if you are looking for there is no such solution which will be satisfied in this case clear yeah? that is what i am trying to say okay so now that that part is clear so essentially what we learnt up till now is this let's do a quick summary summary so essentially we are looking for a initial value problem right initial value problem let me put it this way initial value problem and what sort of problem are we looking at we are looking at a first order equation x f prime equals to f of x so we are looking for a system huh? and for a um, special case it becomes like a you know usual ODE okay so the for this equation what we have seen for this system essentially what we have seen is this uh, x at the point t naught is x naught okay well, there may be no solution huh? there may be a unique solution unique solution or there may be like infinity many solution infinitely many solution okay so what is the guarantee that if i give you any problem you can actually say that let's say um, that equation uh, has a solution and if the solution is unique not okay so that is the theorem which you are going to do so this is called a fundamental local theorem so this is the theorem is local huh? so this is called a fundamental local theorem fundamental local theorem why local because this is not the theorem which i am going to give you is not a uni uh, like a you know global theorem local 
theorem of ODE. Of ODE. Okay, let's look at the theorem here. So this is called Picard's theorem, huh? Picard's existence in universe. So consider the initial value problem. Initial value problem, and what is the initial value problem? X a prime equals to a, x prime equals to f of x. X at the point zero is x naught. Is x naught clear? Which is in R n. Which is in R n. So basically, we are looking for an engrossing system. Suppose, and this is the condition which we need, huh? f is okay. f from R n to R n. Let me put it this way. Suppose f from R n to R n is continuously differentiable. Continuously differentiable. Okay, so f is a vector field which is continuously differentiable. So basically, what it means is. Uh, you know all possible uh, so basically the first order derivative it exists and that is going to be continuous okay right so so if this is the only condition so you are given this equation and the condition which i am just asking this very very minimal condition what i am saying is f has to be just continuously differentiable if that is the case then you can guarantee that there exists a unique solution a uh, very very important unique let put it in a box unique okay solution let me call this is as a one huh? unique solution to one unique solution to the initial value problem one to the initial value problem one clear so in a more mathematical context what does it mean let me later let us put it this way precise so that is there exist a positive huh? some a this is this a and this is not uh, same huh? let's let's call it b let's say huh? or whatever let's say epsilon huh? there exists epsilon positive and a unique unique solution solution x from minus epsilon to epsilon to r n clear so you see i am looking for i am looking for a solution so i am saying that i am looking for a curve which passes through the origin right and at the origin at t equals to 0 the curve should pass through the vector x naught. That's what I'm saying. X zero equals to x naught. That what that that is what it means. It means that at t equals to zero. So when the time is zero, the curve is at the vector x naught. Yes, and then the curve is moving. Yes, according to the rule x prime equals to f of x. I want to know whether there is a such a curve or not. What you can say is in a small neighborhood of t. So basically, minus epsilon and plus epsilon. Okay, time in a small time minus epsilon and plus epsilon you can actually say that there is such a curve given f is continuous differential so basically a unique uh, solution like this uh, satisfying satisfying x0 equals to x here yeah? okay so uh, the proof of this thing we have to do and before we go on uh, I think this is okay, right? Yeah. Okay. So, yes. Before we go on, I in the first lecture, yes, in the first uh, week we talked about this, right? So, but again, let let us just quickly recall. Recall. I am not going to do the proof. Huh? Now, we are going to recall some uh, concepts and then we are going to do the proof. Okay. See that let omega subset of Rn be an open set open set huh? so I am looking for an open set a function a function capital F from omega subset of Rn to Rn clear 
is is said to be lips is continuous lips is continuous we are going to need this concept here that is why we are just uh, saying lips is continuous on omega if there exist k huh? this k of course is positive such that such that f of y minus f of x so please understand this f of x and f of y f is a rn to rn function right it's a vector field so whenever i'm saying f of x minus f of y this element is in rn this element is in rn so i am taking the difference of two vectors and i am taking the modulus the norm of that so this norm think of it as a norm in rn okay okay so that will always be dominated by constant times norm of y minus x so again y minus x x and y are in rn so this is also the rn norm okay this should hold for all x y in uh, uh, x y omega okay right now the the k the constant k uh, this is very important this k depends only on depends only on omega yeah and not in, on any particular point okay so k only depends on omega and is called is called the Lipschitz constant this we already did huh? so Lipschitz constant constant for f for capital f okay and you can also recall that we call uh, so we say also f is locally Lipschitz Lipschitz okay if each point in omega okay has a neighborhood neighborhood what is the neighborhood let's say omega prime which is subset of omega okay such that such that when you restrict f to omega prime so when you restrict f to omega prime it is going to be ipsis clear okay and you know you do realize that in this case there is a Lipschitz constant but that actually is going to vary according to omega prime yes uh, so we have already covered all of this in the first week so i am not going to elaborate this but basically uh, this is just to recall yes okay now you see why the question is this why are you suddenly talking about Lipschitz continuity here because the statement of the theorem does not say anything about Lipschitz continuity but we are going to use this huh? this is a very very important property in that sense okay so before we do that again we have to go through a small lemma so what is the lemma so it says that let capital F from omega subset of Rn to Rn so we are looking for a continuous differentiable vector field so let's say this is continuous differentiable then capital F is locally Lipschitz Lipschitz I should write it properly it is capital L Lipschitz okay so what is me what it means is see uh, it is saying that if you have a continuous differentiable function see the statement of the theorem which we are working with it has that if the vector field okay is continuously differentiable c1 that is this is c1 c1 right so what we are saying is if the vector field in question is continuous differentiable then we can say that the vector field is locally Lipschitz okay so what is the proof the proof is this so see suppose 
that capital F okay from omega to Rn Rn is C1 let's just say it is C1 and we start with x0 which is in omega see f is c1 given to us right and i have to show a locally lift so basically i will start with a point x0 which is uh, where i will show that there is a neighborhood around x0 where f restricted to that neighborhood is Lipschitz. that's what you have to show okay so now let epsilon positive be small enough such that enough such that omega epsilon huh, bar so this uh, closure of omega epsilon okay so this I am defining as the closed ball okay so this is x minus x naught so this is the set of all those x okay in sorry in omega such that x minus x naught so this is norm huh? this is rn rn okay uh, so x norm of x minus x naught is less than equals to epsilon clear okay so this is uh, i am defining this thing here yeah? and uh, for now i don't want to use that bar all the time so let's just say this is uh, omega o epsilon huh? let's just call it o epsilon that will be better okay now you see o epsilon what is happening is this f is c1 right f is c1 and it is defined in whole omega right so you can actually have that the norm of d f of x okay d f of x okay this is always dominated by some upper bound okay so essentially why what i'm trying to say is this see if is c1 right that will imply that the derivative of f at some point x is uh, a linear map from rn to rn right which is again continuous because this is c1 right so uh, dfx is continuous is continuous C if f is c1 df df that map is continuous map again df at a particular point x is a linear map that is different huh? and but anyways here in our case dfx is continuous right and you see this o epsilon this set is compact compact okay so if you are choosing your omega uh, the, the point x from O epsilon okay so this holds for all x in O epsilon okay so if you are choosing your x from O epsilon what is happening is this uh, that uh, df you are basically looking at at uh, is you are restricting it to a compact set and we know that a continuous function on a compact set is going to be bounded so basically it attains a maximum uh, somewhere on the compact set so that is why that is what i wrote so the norm of dfx is bounded clear okay also you note that since this is closed set also o epsilon is convex right very very important it is convex okay so what is happening is this for if we start with two points y and u in o epsilon okay if we do that that will imply y plus epsilon u okay y plus epsilon u will be in o epsilon where u will be defined as is nothing but z minus y okay see the, what i am trying to do is this o epsilon so let me let me draw this part this is x naught okay so the ball is at center at x naught this is o epsilon o epsilon 
here now you see uh, see this is compact so you start with any two points y and z you start with any two points y and z okay and then the straight line joining y and z okay that should be in o epsilon because o epsilon is convex okay so the thing is i am defining a new straight line so sorry that's line segment containing y and z must be in this huh? sorry line segment not line now you see the straight line which is given by y plus epsilon u this this straight line this should be also in o epsilon huh? and what is u here u is nothing but z minor mm, i did a small mistake here u is not in o epsilon for y in o epsilon so basically what i'm trying to say is this since y o epsilon is convex that will imply that y plus epsilon let's call it u okay is in o epsilon where where u is in z minus y okay y is z minus y and 0 less than equal s less than equal 1 okay why is this true see let's let's check you see y plus epsilon u is nothing but z minus y right so it is nothing but Mm, uh, this turns out to be 1 minus epsilon times y plus epsilon z okay so you do realize if, if epsilon lies between 0 and 1 this will lie in o epsilon okay so if y and z is in uh, o epsilon then epsilon times z plus 1 minus epsilon times y has to be in o epsilon so this is what i am writing here in a short uh, thing hand okay yeah that's fine now you see we define let phi of x yes this is defined as capital f of y plus s u okay see i'm defining a new function the function is defined from r and is taking values in r n clear so this is our new definition of psi then you, you see this inside this function as a function of s is differentiable of course this is a linear function is differentiable as a function of s yes and capital f is a c1 function so that is also continuously differentiable so phi is nothing but the so since phi is the composition composition of two c1 function of two c1 function okay if, if since it is a composition what happens is you can talk about the chain rule phi prime of s is nothing but the derivative of f which is df acting at y plus su okay uh, df at y plus su acting at u okay because you know that uh, by chain rule the derivative of this is going to be u because derivative is with respect to s okay so this is what we are going to get so therefore what is happening is this see therefore what is f of z minus f of y you remember for any y and z in that ball i need to show that f of y minus f of z is dominated by y minus z the norm yeah so i am looking for f of z minus f of y see if we do that this is nothing but psi of one what is psi of one psi of one is nothing but f of y okay minus psi of 0 what is psi of 0 psi of 0 is nothing but uh, one second huh? sorry uh, psi of 1 is nothing but f of z and psi of 0 is nothing but uh, f of y right okay so this is can be written as 0 to 1 the fundamental theorem of uh, calculus psi prime of s ds okay and again psi prime of s we already know what it is it is 0 to 1 df of y plus su acting at u okay so please understand df y plus su is nothing but a linear map from rn to rn okay rn to rn and this is acting at an element of uh, so this is a map okay and this is acting at an element of uh, rn okay so this is what it means right now you see what is happening is this uh, this u okay this u is nothing but an element in uh, o epsilon 
right u is the element of o epsilon okay and in o epsilon so if we are just restricting our f to o epsilon what is happening is this okay so let let us put it this way c if we take the norm of fz minus f of y okay that can always be dominated by 0 to 1 the constant times norm of u ds okay why can we do this c let's say that i want to show that it is locally Lipschitz, right so i do not have to look at the whole omega but in a neighborhood right and what is the neighborhood the neighborhood in our case is o epsilon here and in o epsilon since o epsilon is compact right uh, we showed that this is true right that there is a like a upper bound the maximum is attained somewhere so that maximum i can if i am taking the norm here see if i am taking the norm here so what do i have let me put it this way fz minus f of y equals to 0 to 1 df y plus su acting at u ds this is what we had right uh, this is a linear map again and this is an element of rn element of rn and this is a linear map from rn to rn okay c if i put a norm in both sides so there will be a norm on both sides right and then this will be dominated by 0 to 1 so this is just a um, integral um, uh, this inequality is coming from the integral inequality so this is norm of df of y plus su okay times norm of u so this norm is in is from l r n to r n norm and this is r n norm right ds now this is always dominated by k this we saw okay so that is what we are going to use here clear yeah. and you remember how we are getting this thing so this we already talked about in week one so if you do not remember please go through that okay so so this is the case and now you see if um, this is the case this is nothing but k times the k comes out it becomes 0 to 1 norm of u ds and what is u u is nothing but k times norm of z minus y okay and 0 to 1 ds is 1 essentially so you see this holds for all yz in o epsilon okay now the question is this. so so this is proved huh? so this is locally ellipsis so basically what i'm trying to say is this if it is continuous device it is locally ellipsis now think about it this way let let me ask you this question question why suddenly locally ellipsis why not ellipsis so if f is c1 f is c1 does that imply f is ellipsis we saw it is locally ellipsis but is it ellipsis okay so what about the same pr this proof the proof does it work do you think it will work of course it won't work right why it won't work because you will not get this bound only the bound which you are going to get here you see since uh, it is local what is happening is this there is a neighborhood which is going to be compact and in that compact neighborhood you can have a bound on df that is very important here you see yeah so without this bound you can't uh, this the, the whole thing does not really work okay so um, the at least this proof won't work okay but the question is this is it true that whether it is Lipschitz or not okay the answer is no I don't say the answer is so you have to do videos okay now let's look at the uh, proof of this what is the proof of what proof of our fundamental theorem again let me recall what the fundamental theorem is we are basically looking at x prime equals to f of x and x restricted at the point t equals to 0 is x naught clear what i am saying is this given f is continuous differentiable just that only continuous differentiability will guarantee a unique solution in some neighborhood of 0 clear okay so you see so proof proof of fundamental theorem let, let us put it this way of fundamental theorem this is also called picard's existence and uniqueness theorem huh? okay so you see if let's say okay let me put it this way a remark huh? before we look at the proof 
let's do this remark and then we go to the proof so if x from some i some i to r yes satisfies satisfies x prime t equals to f of x of t if it satisfies this with x0 equals to x0 what does that imply that will imply that x of t is equals minus x0 so if you are indicating both sides minus x at the point 0 is nothing but 0 to t f of x of s ds right so this is integrating getting both sides clear okay so this form this form is called the integral form integral form and you can see that it is actually both ways okay so if you have a c1 function x then uh, and satisfying the equation then it will satisfy the integral form if there is a function uh, which satisfy the integral form then they are going to satisfy the equation yeah? so integral form of the differential equation x prime equals to f of x clear okay let's look at the now we come to the proof of this so you see what i'm going to do is this i will show that there is a you know function which will satisfy the integral form once i do that then you see that, that if there is a function which satisfy the integral form then that function has to be the solution of the equation okay so uh, proof so we will do some uh, assumptions here first of all i will write that o rho is a closed ball okay closed ball of radius rho rho positive and it is centered at x naught and centered at centered at x naught okay now what is x naught x naught is the point through which our curve passes at the time t equals to 0 clear okay a these are some assumptions huh? b is there exist a Lipschitz constant Lipschitz constant constant okay k for f on oro get c oro is closed ball of course it's bounded so what i am trying to do is this uh, it's compact set and f you are given to be a c1 function right in omega so when f is restricted to of epsilon oro sorry then uh, we know that this is local ellipsis and hence there is a uh, ellipsis constant right okay now norm of fx okay this is always greater than uh, bounded by m on oro again oro is compact right f is a continuous function compact set there is a bound maxima which is let's call as m and the thing is we will choose okay choose uh, a clear which is less than equal minimum of so this is just a technical thing nothing special i will show you how why we need this but this is just a technical thing which we need rho by m 1 by k okay and we will write the interval i to be minus a comma a okay so these are our assumptions these are our assumptions hmm? with these assumptions we are going to start by writing down something called a picard effect okay so what we did what did i tell you you see we saw that if there is a c1 map which satisfies this equation then it has to satisfy this integral form and vice versa 
so essentially i will form we will construct a sequence of function which will actually converge to the integral form and then that solution will actually be a solution of our equation that's the idea okay so how do we do something like this see uh, we start with some uh, iteration scheme so we start with the iteration scheme and this iteration scheme is called scheme called picard iteration called picard iterate iteration huh? picard iteration and what is it you see the thing is this picard iteration okay so the first trait we are going to define is u naught of t to be sorry x naught of t to be identical equals to x naught okay see i am trying to you know somehow approximate the solution clear now what do we know the only thing which we know about the solution is at the point t equals to 0 so at time t equals to 0 it has to pass through x naught so even though it is a very crude approximation but you can always guarantee that x naught identical equals to x naught so basically uh, the first function which is identical equals to x naught should always um, I mean at least you know is a good approximation right because it passes through the initial point that's all okay now so define let okay now define the next approximation x1 of t how do you define the next approximation you see I want my approximate uh, functions to do this x at the point t minus x to 0 equals to 0 to t f of uh, x is ds right this we want okay we actually want this you see you can write this thing as x t equals to what is x 0 it is x naught plus 0 to t f of x s d s ok so these are all equivalent so I want my iterate to converge here ok so I will define it accordingly I will define it using x naught which is x naught plus 0 to t f of you see x s right so I will use the um, previous uh, x here which is x naught in the our case x naught of t sorry s ds clear ok so this if you write it it is nothing but x naught plus what is x naught of s it is x naught right so it is f of x naught so t times f of x naught f of x naught is essentially a constant vector so I can take it out so 0 to t ds is t now since t is less than a right and you know how we are getting this right and the norm of fx naught is less than equal m clear okay therefore x1 of t minus x0 okay see what we need to do is this essentially I am starting out at t equals to 0 we are at x0 right and the second iterates or the nth iterate which you are going to get okay or the solution which you are going to get must be in the ball o epsilon right so basically the x1 of t which you define for all t should be in o epsilon okay how do you guarantee that so x1 of t minus x0 I want to make it less than rho can I do that so, this is nothing but equals to mod t norm of f x0 right this is just uh, I mean basic calculus so this is dominated by a because mod t is always less than equal a that is given right see uh, see i is between minus a to a I am taking t from there so it is always dominated by a and what is f of x naught that is given to be m dominated by a where is it given you see this is given here okay this is given here so it is less than m now you see a m okay uh, a m is less than rho no you see where uh, you see i chose rho such a way that a is less than minimum of rho and m 
so a is always less than rho by m so a m is always less than rho okay so that is what we are using here that is what this, so as i told you this condition is a technical condition okay so this is less than rho yeah what does that imply it implies that x1 of t is always in o rho this set okay for all t i okay see x not is a point is a vector x not okay and o rho is this okay o rho is a ball closed ball centered at x not the iterate which we are finding is such that at all time t x1 is always in that neighborhood that's the point and not only x1 we want all our extensions to be in that neighborhood okay c now by induction this as you by induction induction assume that assume that xk of t is defined defined and the norm of x k t minus x not is less than rho for all t in i clear huh? so essentially i am saying it is again in o epsilon so then let define x k plus 1 of t is x naught so this is our definition of huh? x naught plus 0 to t the picardic rate the k plus 1 picardic rate f of x s i want to carry I, I want this to converge to f of x s right so i will use the earlier function which is available to us which is x k in this case x k of s t s clear so now you see this will make sense why because f uh, see x k of s okay so let me put it this way this makes sense since since x k of t is in o epsilon right yes uh, for all s for all s yeah so you see all of this f acting at x k of s all of this is defined properly Okay. so it's not a problem now you see if you take the norm x k plus 1 of t minus x naught let's look at this norm this is always dominated by 0 to root t norm of f of x k of s t s clear okay now you see x k of s is in o rho yeah and f restricted to o rho is always bounded by m so i will just use it like m times 0 to t ds clear which is m a okay which is less than why m a because it will be empty right and t is again dominated by a t is varying between you see t is varying between minus a to a okay so that's bound that is the bound which i'm using okay so that's fine now so what we have is this see by induction we have therefore you have this sequence x n of t let's say okay which are well defined well defined in oro clear now what we will show is so next we will show we prove so we have to prove the convergence right so i, I now we will show that this xn that actually converges to some x of t which actually happens to be the solution so next we prove there is a constant l greater than 0 such that 
for all k greater than equal 0 norm of u k plus 1 t minus u k of t is less than equal a k whole power small k times l okay this is what we need to show huh? so if we show this thing we basically show it is Cauchy equation uh, it's a Cauchy sequence and then all of the, uh, we can get what we want okay right so how do we show this see let so we'll take the maximum of u1 minus u0 okay so let l is the maximum of the norm of x1 t minus x0 of t t lies between minus a to a okay that is possible why it is possible t is varying between minus a to a x1 and x0 are both continuous function right so uh, the maximum exist on a compact set right so the maximum exists and that maximum we'll call it as a now you see this l this l okay uh, you can of course see that and l is less than equal a m right you see we proved it right where is it yeah this one this one this is norm right okay so this is your um, the maxima i am choosing and i am saying that is l so l is always bounded by am which is less than rho right so that is always there i am okay that is what i wrote l is less than equal am now let's look at this norm of x2 of t minus x1 of t okay this is nothing but 0 to t f of x1 of s minus f of x0 of s ds okay the norm the norm okay now you see i know that this is again dominated by 0 to t k times norm of x1 of s minus x0 of s ds okay this we already know why this is true because you see x1 and x0 since x1 of s and x0 of s is in oro for all s right so that is why we need it in oro for all s so since these are in oro for all s f is Lipschitz continuous in oro right f is locally Lipschitz and in when f is restricted to o a oro then f is Lipschitz continuous so i can take the Lipschitz constant out let's just say that constant is k so that is out and then we can write it as k times norm of x1 minus x1 is it okay now if this is the case this is nothing but less than equals to a times k capital l right what is capital l the maximum of x1 and x2 so this can be dominated by l and then 0 to t uh, ds will be dominated by a okay now i want you guys to do something huh? this part i am not doing this thing so you use induction use induction this you already can do i think to show to show that norm of u k plus 1 of t minus u k t is bounded by a k power k times l okay this i think you guys can uh, show it yourself okay please do this part okay right now uh, so this is fine yeah? now let alpha equals to a k alpha equals to a k so i we know that alpha is less than one this is our assumption this is our assumption yes see k we chose it in see a is less than equal minimum of this and one by k so a k is always less than one clear so this a k i am choosing it to be alpha which is again less than one so now you see given 
any epsilon positive we may choose choose n large enough large enough okay so that for any r greater than s greater than n okay what do we have we have x r of t minus x s of t norm is bounded by summation k equals to n to infinity norm of x k plus 1 of t minus x k of t right this is again dominated by summation k equals to n to infinity alpha k times l right here yeah. so this we can do so this is like uh, the user uh, usual uh, calculus stuff i can just write it like this okay and once i can do that this is always less than equal epsilon okay yeah. see the thing is why can we do this because the it is basically a geometric series right it is basically a geometric series okay and what do you know we know that since the series converges the geometric series can be made as small as possible okay now what we do is this so we show that this is true huh? so basically what we have is this we have this sequence um, the sequence of function okay so let me write it this way you see we have a sequence of function xn is a sequence of function of function we have shown that this is cauchy so which converges right converges uniformly uniformly to a continuous function to a continuous function x from i to rn okay this is cauchy sequence huh? and the convergence is uniform so basically we know that uniformly convergent sequence this will actually converge to a uh, continuous function x from i to rn clear okay also see that x k plus 1 of t is nothing but x naught plus 0 to t capital f of x k of s sorry yes x k of s ds clear okay now if you take taking limits on both sides take limits on both sides taking limit on both sides both sides what do we have we have x of t is nothing but x naught plus limit t tends to infinity 0 to t capital f of x k of s ds clear yes i can take the limit inside because of the uniform continuity and then i have this is x naught plus 0 to t limit t tends to infinity f of x k s t s right now see f is continuous function it is continuously differentiable huh? so i can take the limit inside so i can say this is 0 to t f of x s d s clear so uh, uh, therefore what do you have therefore x we have found a x from i to oro okay which satisfies satisfies the integral form the integral form form of the differential equation right differential equation okay so what does it say it says that uh, it is a solution of the equation and hence x is in c1 here so um, we actually got that you have a you know uh, existence of solution at least one solution yes 
okay that is there now please remember this thing that uh, the solution which we are, we are getting is in my i i is minus a a you see it is in where is it i i is minus minus a a clear and this minus a a a is uh, once again huh? i did uh, some mistake here i what did i no no it's okay it's okay a i chose huh? chose a fine okay so um, now you see so essentially the solution which you are getting is a small neighborhood of zero okay so that is why we are saying this is a local theorem so basically we are saying that we have a curve which is defined in a small neighborhood of zero which satisfies the equation and passes to the initial point here yeah? okay now the important part is the existence part so existence part is done now the important part is the uniqueness uniqueness of solution now this is not very difficult to uh, prove let's do this part uniqueness of solution so let's say let x y from i to r are two solutions sorry i to x of t is in omega r two solutions of the differential equation x prime equals to f of x satisfying x0 equals to y0 equals to x0 ok see why x and y is from i to r x and y this basically x of t and y of t that should also satisfy f of x t right and f the domain is in omega so basically x t has to be in omega here yeah? so in that sense essentially okay now you see i have to show that x is equals to y right so we have to show we have to show to show x of t equals to y of t for all t in i so let q let q is nothing but the maximum okay of norm of x t minus y t and where is t varying between t is varying between minus a to a okay so this is minus a to a right clear T is varying between minus a to a. Okay, so that is there. Now, this maximum C, let's say, and okay, let, let, let me put it this way. Let's say that this maximum is attained somewhere at the point T1. Huh? So, T1 is in minus a to a. Okay, so therefore, what is happening is this. Okay, first of all, if the maximum um, can can it be attained? Of course, it can be attained. See, norm. What did I tell you? Norm uh, is a continuous map, right? How do we show? See, norm from some x to r is a continuous function. Show this first of all. Check this part. Function. Check. Okay, right. Uh, I already did it. If you remember properly, think of one inequality. Yes, think of one inequality. I already proved it. Yes. Okay. So it is a continuous function while doing Lipschitz continuity. It's a continuous function. Okay. And uh, it's moreover, it is Lipschitz continuous actually. And this x and y, these are continuously differentiable. So x minus y is continuously differentiable. Norm x minus y is basically a composition. Uh, so it's a continuous map and on a compact set minus a to a continuous map there is a maxima okay so now you see q is i can write it as 0 to t 1 x prime of s minus y prime of s ds right why because you see this is nothing but mod of x t 1 minus y t1 i can write it just like this right t1 
clear okay fine now you see this 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 particular thing i can always do it to be less than equal 0 to t1 f of x of s minus f of y of s yes okay i can do that now this is always dominated by you see f is dominated by k f has a bound k right so this is always dominated by k times 0 to t1 mod of no, sorry norm of x of so this is norm huh? these are all norm because these are all vectors huh? these are all norms so x of s minus y of s ds okay so that is always dominated by a k q clear now since c a k is less than 1 huh? then this has to be a k is less than equal a k times q so in, since a k is less than 1 the only option is q should be 0 there is no other option okay therefore if k is 0 uh, q is 0 then the maximum of this x t minus y t the norm of that is going to be 0 that will imply that x t has to be equals to y of t for all t in minus a a clear so the unit test follows right so with this i am going to end this